The Helen Sussman Foundation has made a submission to the National Energy Regulator of South Africa. The regulator called for public comments on ESCOM's latest tariff application. The HSF has punched holes in the power utilities' reasons for significant tariff increases over the next three years. It says ESCOM hasn't provided adequate answers on the increasing cost of debt servicing, the higher cost of primary energy, and lower electricity demand. The Foundation's legal counsel, Anton Van Dalsen, joins us now. Good evening, Anton. Thanks very much um, for your time. Broadly uh, speaking, what informs uh, your opposition, essentially, to uh, the, the, the tariffs that ESCOM is asking for? Um, I think quite apart from the level of the tariff increases that have been applied for, and these work out at a level of 15% per annum for the next three years, uh, our real concern, quite apart from the, the size of these increases and the effect that they will have on the economy, is that ESCOM is confronted with some very serious issues. And it's not clear what it is doing to confront them. And the main issues being, first of all, that there's been stagnant electricity demand over the last 10 years. Um, and in the last year, ESCOM has admitted itself that is, there's even been a decrease. Um, and secondly, the um, cost of its debt servicing is extremely high to the degree that it is having to borrow money in order to service its debt. Um, so its costs keep on increasing way beyond inflation, whereas it's not selling anything more. Well, which uh, the CEO has admitted to, but says they have really been left with no choice. I think... When the new CEO came in, that was the situation, but we are still waiting for ESCOM to give the outline of its new strategy. And the third thing that I should mention beyond these two issues is that there's really a new energy landscape where renewable energy is far cheaper than anything else. And in the new government's integrated resource plan, it's clear that uh, this is the case. The draft has been submitted for comment and the government will be finalizing this soon. So taking all these things together, what is urgently needed is for ESCOM to devise a strategy to confront these issues. It said in its annual report earlier this year it would have a strategy by the end of September. That has come and gone. And in its interim um, results presentation last week, uh, ESCOM said that they are now discussing the strategy with government. But I think it is very urgent that this strategy is finalized so that ESCOM can make it clear that they are confident of um, business in the next few years. But the problem is that with the applications that have been submitted to the energy regulator for the next three years, they make as if it's business as usual. Uh, there is no strategy on how to confront a radically changed situation, and that is very, very urgent. I get you on uh, the strategy, but when it comes to in the integrated resource plan, uh, is it fair, really, to um, you know, make, or, 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 uh, make it sound as though ESCOM is actually responsible for that because they aren't, and their mandate hasn't, hasn't changed? The mandate hasn't changed, but the fact remains that the new or the draft integrated resource plan shows that by far the cheapest for the next 10, 20, 30 years is uh, a portfolio of electricity producing assets where wind, solar and gas would take up the major portion of, the inc of whatever increase. Um, there's no space for nuclear and there's a decreasing um, uh, not need, but there's a decreasing generation of the coal assets due to the, um, the, coal, uh, the coal power plants being phased out as they get old. So it's in order to confront a radically changed situation where cheaper energy is the, renewable, uh, the, the renewables, and ESCOM needs to see how it can integrate this into its distribution system. And it has said from time to time it's too expensive, it's difficult, it uh, creates problems for grid stability. These are the issues it needs to address.
Well, I don't think many people will argue with you around uh, 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 what you are saying, in essence, that uh, you know that uh, uh, how the how ESCOM plans to get out of the quagmire it is in now um, should be a precondition to them being given uh, money, whether it's a bailout or whether um, uh, it is tariff increases. However, one wonders how much of uh, what uh, you are saying has got to do with the fact that, I mean, you went to court, for example, last um, year to challenge some of the uh, um, agreements, you know, that uh, ESCOM has with uh, certain people. How much of uh, what you are raising now around tariffs has got to do with, in fact, a fight, and one is not saying it's a wrong or misplaced fight, I think it's a very legitimate one, but a fight that has existed long before uh, the tariff increases that we're talking about now? Yeah, now, I'd, I'd like to separate the two. The um, court case that we have uh, with ESCOM is um, really centers around the activities of the Gupta linked companies uh, and the um, misappropriation of funds. Um, we are in our, in our comments to the National Energy Regulator, we have not addressed that at all. We've purely looked at what is ESCOM's current situation and what it needs to do as far as its strategy is concerned in order to keep on operating on a consistent level. So you're not uh, sort of unwittingly perhaps punishing it for those scenes as well? Well, we, we, we could, uh, I mean, in, a, in our application to NERSA, we could very easily have made a big story of the um, fraud, the corruption, the maladministration, all of which is well documented at ESCOM. We've chosen not to do that. We've conf so we've solely focused on the strategy issues that need to be addressed by ESCOM. Okay, that's where we're going to leave it for this evening. Thanks very much for uh, coming through. Helen Susman Foundation's legal counsel, Anton Van Dalsen.